well especially after lunch to see so many people here is so gratifying i hope uh, we can i hope we do justice to we do justice to that and so what i am basically looking at is in the meantime the emr is booting up see basically what we need to do is to see what we are doing we look at ourselves and we also look at the world now unfortunately i don't have any financial interest when you look at um, emr the traditional visits of a patient it's usually that you see a paper it can be unstructured free format free text you know very legibly written absolutely no doubt about it very neatly written but unfortunately you cannot actually do anything with this other than just look at it you cannot capture any data and then if you're in a clinic you would probably file it like this or if it's in a large hospital it will just go into the archives and then it will catch up with the termites you can even have a structured sort of paper formats i mean it is very useful when you're actually doing the work up with the patients you don't miss anything stat but it is still unstructured then you can go one step you can make very unique uh, sort of case sheets like this particular uh, person you know this is 2015 Uh, and uh, you know they say the shell shock there is no such diagnosis which means there has been no uniformity stand of of the actual standard of diagnosis which has been done or the methodology which has been used or you can use the optical character recognition 2015 uh, or 1915 2015 recently i just picked it up uh, from somewhere so you can even have ocr capability which is optical character recognition most of our scanners uh, fortunately have that so what it was designed was it was designed to pick up only this you can see the arrow there right so they run it through a search engine and you have to write this very legibly now if this is not legibly written the ocr can't understand it you know it will come as some other different diagnosis then you do a pattern match and then you get nucleus cirrus but then this is not still uh, ideal and as doctors right from day 1 we are used to writing case sheets so we are very handy at writing the case sheets Now, unfortunately that has been our problem so what does the health it sector think of us see we are looking at ourselves and saying that you know this is not okay that is not okay they are looking at us as a market they are saying that the push remember push needs to come from the payers the payers could be individual who actually pay out of pocket it could be the insurance it could be whatever then they also say that adopting emr is not an easy process see they 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 know how to build their story so that for every 1 rupee which a doctor earns 25 sort of paise goes to the it sector so if we are not going to start doing this somebody else is going to do it for us so they also say yes it's ridiculously time consuming and they also say that when uh, you go to a typical clinic like dr satyan was saying uh, i'm going to examine a patient for 10 minutes i do my slit lamp you know we are very fast at that we finish off in 2 minutes then you turn around and then keep typing and then once you type like that it just goes on and on and on so what the patient thinks is that you know you're not giving adequate care then they also say that it should be friendly affordable comprehensive then they'll say you can use your iphone you can use your ipad i'll make this interface i'll make that interface if we are not ready for the interfaces this is the human interface see there is an interface between what you think what you want to put into the data and all that so that's the human interface part of it so if we don't actually decide for ourselves what is it that we want it's going to become more difficult so it's going to be implemented so in summary basically when you look at the health it they say that they need to share the data especially with the tps it needs to be friendly and then it is time consuming so this is their plank so i looked at what uh, the see when you look at aims i mean they're supposed to be a huge big institution and they usually take lead in most of these things and this is their newsletter i picked this up and computerization was highlighted then they had this milestones through which they achieved certain things then they highlighted this as their major achievements the major achievement they did first was to start with the discharge summary and operation notes 
So they didn't take everything at the same point. Just imagine, Ames is such a huge institute, and if you try to make EMR in one go, it's not going to be possible. So what you do is you do it in parts. So that's what they did. And then they adopted actually open source software, which was already being used in the US. And they also created nursing informatics, I mean, I mean, uh, I mean informatics specialists. You can see all these happy smiley faces. They are the BPO of Ames. Actually, if you come to think of it, that's what it is. Most of the US hospitals, all this transcription is done in India in a different time zone. And then next day morning, it goes back. Fine. They dictate, and then they transcribe, and the information is captured. So what is going to happen? You're going to have cost added on this. This is because the human interface. What they have done is, most probably, that they, they wanted to go ahead with EMR, and then also bring in some amount of control. So why is it always EMR is implemented? Why don't we say EMR adoption? See, when you look at this phone, and this phone, and this phone, Nobody implemented the iPhone, right? The reason was it's because it is easy to use it. Now, what is the government stand? This is surprising. Most people don't even know that this exists. Even I didn't know it until I went into this. They have a national health portal. You can access it. And then they have given all summaries. They've given an executive summary of how a health record should be in India. Then they have said SNOMED CT. I don't know how many of you would know what SNOMED CT is straight away. Then HL7, DICOM, ICD-10 in India. SNOMED CT is actually a, it's actually a nomenclature in medicine, and then it can be used. And then you have the ICD-10. ICD-10, I mean, most of us know ICD-9 we've been using. Now they are actually transitioning into ICD-10. SNOMED CT is pretty interesting. Have a look at this particular thing. See, the pupils are equal. They react to light and accommodation you can see this number. So if you put this number, it automatically says that that is what it is. Basically, SNOMED CT is the actual information capture, and ICD-10 is your diagnosis. So that is the interface between that. Then you have the ICD-10. Then I took an example of glaucoma. You have all these lists here. The advantage of ICD-10 was you could now say right eye and left eye. In ICD-9, you couldn't say that. So these are all the acronyms which I just want to introduce to you. And HL7 is very important. See, when we create a lot of data, we need to exchange this data with so many people. And then we have to optimize the workflow, reduce the ambiguity. See, when you're communicating with another, uh, say, it can be a doctor, it can be a hospital, they have to understand what you're saying exactly. So if you have a code for it, and then you exchange the information, then it gets better. See. It actually works at two levels. So it can, it can be in your clinic. This is the physician, the front desk, the billing. Then it also operates at a macro level. See, you have agency reporting, provider responsibility, bedside instruments for your you know, OT, then image pictures, clinical systems, lab, retail pharmacy. So all these people have to understand. And this was very interesting uh, sort of PDF which I downloaded. Now, this is from Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. He says that the EHR, okay, standards have already been finalized and notified to the government. So, which means we are not even at the, I mean, first baby step. And you will be surprised to look at the date. 4th September 2014. So, the government is already ready with all these things. We are still not aware of it. Then I looked at what is it that the AIOS is doing on this. See, AIOS is the apex body of all the ophthalmologists here. So what they did was they just took about um, approximately six of the softwares, and they didn't issue any guidelines for standard or operating system, security of the patient data, then the lab reports, all these things. And there is no mention of government policy on EMR or EHR. That's the surprise we have. They just reviewed six softwares as on website, and they suggested the one by Shankar Nethril is good. It's been provided, I think, by TCS. But the problem was it was cloud storage, and discontinuation with them was difficult. And there is no policy on the closure of service. OK, we adopt a EMR or a EHR. Then the actual provider with the cloud, he goes bust, or he says, this is not economical for me. What do we do with the data? When I asked them that, they told me, 
we will give you a printout of each of those records, and the cost was five rupees. So if you have approximately 40,000 or 60,000 patients, and each one has an average of approximately 25 pages, imagine the cost. And if you have paper records, how are you going to actually get the data back? So there is no, what shall I say, um, I mean, sort of uh, insulation for the doctor. So they have to take the call. You can't go and sue uh, some company like that. Then I looked at the AOS members' opinion. There's a lot of sort of chatter going on on this. See, they, they say there are many electronic record systems. It's not interchangeable. Can AOS look into the matter and all these things? And then um, I also picked up Dr. Ramurthy's thread on this and did inform him. And he said, yes, I have seen this with a lot of interest. The same is being forwarded. But the problem is we have to bell the cat. Our attempts at EMR is lack of structured format. There is no workflow which is uniform. Every clinic works differently. Everyone says different things. There is lack of actual data exchange between all the stakeholders. You can have huge screens like this, and you can enter all these things. The problem is, again, it's the interface. So we have to, I mean, that is the challenge. Then we can have legibility of the screen, which is absolutely, I mean, uh, see, once you have this much data, you can automatically have all these things. But the challenge is to get the data in. When you look at the timeline of EMR, I was surprised. It started in 1960, and this was started in a, in a clinic which was in California and Mountain View. And then they have been at it from 1970. So the history of EMR, EHR is really very long, and they have been at this challenge for that long, unlike us. So what they said was that when we promote EMR, EHR, it saves cost, better accuracy, efficiency, etc. Now this was in approximately 2005. By the time they came to 2012, now, now when you look at the medical college, they said, yes, better care, because the administrators are saying that, it's not the individual doctors. Then limited effect, but 70% of the physicians disagreed, because again, they are the guys, they are the worker bees, they are the one entering all the data, which is used by everybody else. So I'll make a small little difference here. So EMR is actually localized to your clinic. EHR follows the patient. So that's the basic difference between the two. So EMR and EHR are not actually the same. So the American Academy, interestingly, they, they actually had an initiative for it. It is on their website. You can have a look at it. They wanted to harness the potential of these kind of technologies to improve delivery, quality, efficiency of the healthcare. And they also set a timeline and said adoption rate should be 85% by 2014, and more or less they are there. They also recognized specific needs in ophthalmology. See, we have a lot of text, a lot of uh, images, and then we take these <coughs> images, then we have a report for that, and we use that report for our diagnosis and things like that. And they will also assist the ophthalmologists in search of systems and assist government agencies and improve access of information etc. Now, EHR in ophthalmology is very unique. See, you have your office and clinic, and you also have your operation theater. So it, it should be absolutely seamless. If there is a problem there, you're not going to be able to access it. And they must incorporate data from other healthcare providers who may not be part of the ophthalmology practice. And uh, the problems of the current EHR are, it is actually developed for large hospitals, and small vendors, they really lack resources and then it should address the specific requirements of ophthalmology. So the future direction which they have adopted was that the government agencies must create the actual rules of actual meaningful use. When they say meaningful use, and they also provide them with actual incentives. And then they also said that they're going to reduce the payment to a particular doctor if they don't adopt the technology. So they are actually forcing the whole situation, which is what we will see in another 10 years' time. See, whatever is happening there is going to have a sort of effect here too. And they also have guidelines. So what they did was the AAO, they took the initiative and started to have a guidelines. Okay, it can be for the vendor, it can be, it can be for the doctor also. So this was very interesting sidelight which I saw. So if, if you take an idea from Facebook, for example, about can be the actual medical history, privacy settings can be permission for sharing records, then friendships for provider relationships, and then events for upcoming appointments. So it's very interesting take, you know. 
So when we have vendors of the same software, they can come up with many things like that. So in summary, when you look at hospitals which implement EMR, you can go paper light. Then you aim for actual paperless. You will make very many calls. Staff will panic. Doctors will be upset. But there is some light at the end of the tunnel. I feel AIOS should take a lead in EHR, evolve guidelines for software packages, adopt world standards in EHR, benchmark actual meaningful use, and they should prepare ground rules for how these should work. The most important is to actually evolve the vendor guidelines, especially the portability of data. Suppose you have your data and this A vendor uh, goes away, then you should be able to go with C vendor. So it should be like that. And then you should encourage the IT, I mean health industries to actually look at India. And then you must encourage the adoption of EHR among members. So just to be topical, make in India, use in India. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir.